G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another trade update. Doing these just about every day now. As you can imagine, because we've got 16 teams that are currently inactive in the football season, their rumours are starting to come thick and fast. And it's kind of almost taken a little bit away from grand final week. I think the fact that there was a buy last week as well, it kind of just sort of allowed for all these new rumours to take place. But I am well and truly still very, very excited for the grand final tomorrow. In fact, we are going to be live streaming if you didn't know. So make sure you tune in to the True Footy YouTube channel so we can all watch it together should be lots of fun so yep continuing this little series of just sort of giving a roundup of all the current rumors at the moment in terms of trades one thing that's caught my eye uh, as reported on the AFL website yesterday was the fact that Richmond might be making a bit of a play for a top three pick in this year's draft specifically the Gold Coast Suns pick three now, every year we kind of do hear discussions about how the Suns in particular are willing to put their high draft pick on the table in order to usually obtain a mature player to help them in the short term. But in this case, it appears that they're willing to split their selections because they want more bites at the apple within the top 30 or so in this year's draft. So according to the rumor, the Suns pick three is up for grabs for a team that is willing to offer two picks in the top 20 or so. It doesn't actually specify, but I imagine that's what it's going to take. The Suns currently have picks three, 19, 22, and 43 as their first four. So I'd imagine they're looking at taking maybe five picks in the draft, all in the top 45 or so, which is good because it means they probably rate this year's draft crop, which is always a little bit more exciting for us generally. So this particular article names two clubs that they think might be vying for this pick three. And I will clarify that that pick three will become more likely pick five after the two father sons bids are matched for Dacos and Darcy. But the two clubs in contention are apparently Richmond and Adelaide. And the Richmond one particularly intrigues me. They currently hold pick seven and pick 15 before holding pick 26 and 28 as well in the second round. It's been an interesting offseason for uh, the Tigers so far, so they look like they've secured Robbie Tarrant. It remains to be seen whether they'll pursue the free agency route or uh, through a trade because they obviously want to protect their compensation for Mabi or Chol. But it's interesting to see that we're seeing, you know, a, a balanced approach between wanting to get an experienced player in for the here and now, but also having a good look at this year's draft as well. Pick 7, 15, 26, 28 is a very, very strong draft hand. It's very, very interesting to me that they want to upgrade 7 to 3. It shows to me they've clearly got someone in their crosshairs and perhaps even suggests that they rate the top 5 a fair bit better than say, you know, pick six, seven, eight, nine. Who that likely draft pick is, I'm not too sure. I'd imagine they're probably looking at midfielders, to be honest. So maybe a Finn Callahan or a Matthew Roberts or something comes to mind. But I'd be interested to see what kind of deal they get done here. I'd imagine they'd have to offer both 7 and 15 for pick 3 and perhaps ask for 43 in return. Adelaide's another interesting one where they're supposed to be interested in trading up to pick 3, but they hold pick 4. So who is it exactly that they think won't be available at their pick but will be available at the Gold Coast pick? Again, we're sort of really just discussing rumors here and there's nothing concrete as such but it is interesting to think about all the possibilities it's also reported in the same article that the Suns had inquired about trading up to North Melbourne's peak one so it sounds like they're probably interested in acquiring Jason Horn Francis I'd imagine they're not trading up to pick one for a chance to bid on day cost because that seems very low percentage it's reported though that North knocked them back and allegedly really have their sights set on Jason Horn Francis for themselves as well so that's no surprise, but I guess the takeaway from that is that Gold Coast may be looking at a midfielder with their first pick, when previously I thought they might be looking at, uh, in particular, a key position back. So they still think they can add to that young midfield. There's a lot of water to go under the bridge in terms of all those deals happening. In fact, they, they get talked about every single trade period, but rarely ever do high picks get traded around uh, so easily as that. So I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens there. It'll be a fascinating scenario for me if a club like Richmond lands pick three in this draft. We'll talk about some established players now. And Luke Dunstan is a player who's emerging as one of the hardest players to peg where he's going to end up at in this particular trade period. He's been told by St. Kilda that his services are no longer required. He's an unrestricted free agent, I believe, which means he can pretty much walk to any club that wants him. He's actually had a pretty decent year. He polled 11 Brownlow votes, uh, which would probably put him like second in the overall votes at West Coast for comparison. But while he's a pretty decent inside mid generally, I think he's got some limitations perhaps. I think defensive running is something that I've read about him and his ball use isn't so crash hot either. Not the most impactful midfielder, but he does accumulate pretty well. 
Regardless, though, he's behind a long line of inside mids at that St. Kilda midfield, which is pretty talented. They've got Jack Steele, Seb Ross, Bytel, Crouch, and even Hunter Clark coming through as well. So you can imagine the writing was on the wall for Dunstan for some time. Listening to his comments on Trade Radio as well, he kind of made comments that alluded to the fact that he didn't quite feel part of something or that he was really part of St. Kilda's plans going forward. So it makes sense for both player and club to part ways, I would imagine. But it's really hard to place where he's going to go to, which teams need an established inside accumulator. Previously, you'd say, you know, Gold Coast would be looking at a mature play like this to help them improve in the short term. But the more I think about it, the more I think it's time to really just get as many games as you can into Raul, Anderson, Flanders, these kids. Maybe a year or two ago, it would have made sense. But I think we're probably past the point of needing a Luke Dunstan. One club he's been publicly linked to is Essendon. But again, while people made the point they probably don't have that real crash and bash style in inside mid. They still have a pretty deep midfield, I would say, between Shield, Parrish, Merritt, Andrew McGrath, Langford, and Caldwell as well. So it wouldn't be the worst call because they probably could use some depth, but there's no guarantee they're going to get a best 22 player out of picking him up. I'm just spitballing here, but I could see the most likely scenario is he finds himself back in South Australia, perhaps at a Port Adelaide, who, again, won't be able to guarantee him a spot in the starting lineup every week, but they could use that sort of depth in a midfield that's going to be going around for a premiership tilt next year. Carlton needs some midfield depth, but I think they've got their hands full with guys like Chera and Hewitt, so I don't think they're a realistic option. I suppose Adelaide could maybe use a player as a stopgap solution, and even Fremantle with losing Chera, I don't know if they're going to necessarily bring anyone back in, but I think they've probably traded in their fair share of sort of B-grade players over the last couple of years, and it is genuinely hard to place Dunstan at any one of those clubs. Another player for me that's on the move this offseason that's hard to place would be Peter Laddams from Port Adelaide. He's a South Australian boy, a ruckman. He played in their prelim side, and was selected on the bench in that team, but has allegedly been told he is no longer required at the power. That's an interesting one for me. I thought he was fairly entrenched at Port Adelaide, but evidently not, and they've got Scott Lysette as the first ruck there, but perhaps they feel that combo doesn't work with both those guys in the side and I'd imagine with somewhat of a salary cap squeeze at that club Laddams was the unlucky one to make way again there's no club that he's specifically been linked to so it's a hard one to really nail down where we think he's going to go I'd imagine there's a few teams out there who really need a ruck and three come to mind straight off the bat I think Sydney uh, even though they've picked up Tom Hickey that's probably a shorter term solution with that guy being about 30 years old Geelong have well documented ruck issues and West Coast I think really need a second ruck with Vardy basically retiring this year and Nick Nat on the wrong side of 30 as well. Unfortunately, I think with all three of those clubs, salary will be the main inhibitor there. So I don't know if I can realistically say any of them are going to be in the race for him at all. A couple other clubs that come to mind would be the Bulldogs. Obviously, they've got a pretty good combo in there when Stefan Martin and Tim English are playing together. But Laddams is a much younger option to replace Martin in a couple of years time. So it would be a pretty prudent move for the Dogs and perhaps GWS as well have a, hopefully a bit of money to play with. I still think long term they need to lock down a ruck prospect. The final bit of news that I'm going to mention is some really, really good news for the Melbourne Footy Club. Sam Wiedemann has put pen to paper and extended his stay with the club after some speculation, including by myself, that he might end up somewhere else. Now, I did make the point that him being unsigned this deep into the season was a really bad sign, but now I look across the whole league, I think every club has issues where there's heaps of players still unsigned because they're still working out how to move money around. From what I can gather, Wiedemann's looked you know, sideways in the past, looking at joining other clubs. I did think Collingwood might make a big play for him as a team that needed a pretty good young key forward. However, I think him losing his spot in that demon side might have hurt his value a little bit from what I can read. His biggest suitors were the Gold Coast Suns and North Melbourne to acquire his services. So perhaps he felt that he'd rather stick around with the Melbourne journey. Obviously, the way they're traveling at the moment, he might end up a premiership player in the next couple of years. Who knows? So I don't know if he simply stayed because he couldn't get better offers or if he's really invested in you know the Melbourne program they've got there why wouldn't you be to be honest but either way he's a young talented key forward and it's it's a great result for the demons obviously because if you know ben brown is far from cementing his spot in that side so if that experiment doesn't work out sam wiedemann is a very good young prospect only played 49 games as well i could really see him taking his game to the next level in a few years and uh, from memory he's a top 10 pick as well so plenty of talent there anyway guys that'll do for that particular trade update that may or may not be the last one 
that comes out until after the grand final. It really depends on whether there's a big breaking story in the next 48 hours or so. But hope you're still enjoying the trade content, guys. I'd appreciate if you consider subscribing to the channel if you are enjoying them and you, if you haven't subscribed already. I'm trying to get to 16K by grand final day. So you guys have been fantastic. You helped me hit my goal of 15K uh, and now I've set another audacious one of 16K by grand final day. So any support is much appreciated, guys. If you could like the video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the grand final live stream. Thanks, guys. Catch up.